right, so this is my local hobby shop and they sell Warhammer, which I love and haven't gotten a chance to do or play or paint in a very long time. Now for context, those of you who are new to the channel, I used to collect Warhammer way back in the day, about six or seven years ago. I used to collect Blood Angels and if you were paying attention on my old mural, there was a Blood Angels Space Marine on the backdrop. They just look so cool. Like, look at, they're just so detailed and epic. And what I want to do today is find a model that is super detailed and super epic. And I want to put it together. And then I also want to recreate it in virtual reality in large form. I am interrupting organically. David and Jen, thank you for having me. Now you guys actually stream yourselves. Uh, that's right. On, you have a Twitch channel called Streamed Together. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. I want to thank you so much for opening the shop for me here today. And if you guys want to check out their stuff, you stream games and pixel art? Pixel art, yeah, that's right. Cool. What sort of games? Mostly like retro games that we played when we were kids. So what are you working on at the moment? Uh, this is a Chaos Knight, which is pretty much one of the biggest plastic models in the range that you can buy. I don't want to go too big because I want to recreate it big. I might get these two yep. and I'm going to go back to my roots. We're going Blood Angels. I've got to relive my past a bit. Now, you've painted these, right? Yes. So, uh, well, so myself and I am ready to take your advice because that is amazing. Base coat wash clean it up with the base coat yeah and then you basically go highlight red and then really sharp point highlight thank you Woo -hoo. Sort that out for you this is the part that always used to hurt as a teenager now that i'm an adult it doesn't hurt so much what does hurt is that i have no time to do it unless it's content i can't wait to see what you do <laughs> in all seriousness you guys have been awesome look at this with your you both your sunday jumpers and you look so cute together they stream together so go check them out link in the description thanks for being so accommodating i'll see you guys later i'll let you know how i go awesome Right, it's virtual reality time. I'm a little nervous because that model is actually very detailed and I am not thoroughly experienced in Oculus Medium. I have done a simple sample sculpt and print. If you want to see that, there's a the video I'll link to in the card in the description. It was a success and it was fun. Now I'm going to give it a go with a lot more time, a lot more effort and something I'm uh, a lot more excited about. God, I love virtual reality. So with the basics ticked off, it was time to get into the action, starting off with the stand I would sculpt my soldier on and then setting up my references, which I laid out in front of me. I had a feeling that these would come in useful, but I had no idea how important these would be later down the line, both in beginning to nail the pose and proportions, but through every step as I later added the details and the polish, I had never used reference images in VR sculpting before, but now I don't think I could ever do without them again. Because I spent an hour or two nailing the base basic pose and proportions of the figure's silhouette so I could use this as a reference later when I made all the detailed parts. But also because I wanted to make a bit of a test print of my blobby sketch sculpt just to see if this whole process is going to actually work before I put in a huge amount of time. Print's done. Let's break off these supports and get a proper look at it. It like reveals the sculpture. It's really cool. But as far as proof of concept goes, this is pretty solid in my uh, in my opinion however even though it is cool having just printed it out like this there are two issues one the support structures do leave weird textures that take a lot of time to sort of smooth out and then the other issue is of course to get this printed quickly i just printed this in a low resolution so you can see lots of lines so for my final print i'm going to do two things one i'm going to print it in a much higher resolution which means it'll probably take over a week to print but the second thing i'm going to do is actually break it apart and print print it in different positions. A lot of this can actually be sliced, repositioned and printed much more efficiently and uh, with a much better result. But like I said, proof of concept, I think this thing is gonna be really cool. Now the main event is about to start and this is a big undertaking. The outcome took weeks of sculpting, printing and then painting. And I mean, I actually started filming this video in October. Now I am coming to you in this little portion from the future. The project's amazing by the way, so stay tuned to the end because I really wouldn't be able to do ambitious or expensive videos like this without a sponsor. And I'm really grateful and excited that this video was sponsored by Vectornator, which is a free graphics vector art program available to Mac and iOS users. Vectornator are focused on delivering their promise of making the vector graphics 
graphic design software that everyone loves to work with and use with amazing features like artboards, auto trace, boolean operations and loads more. The app is available across the Apple ecosystem and it's a unified code base which means anytime there's an update, which they do frequently by the way, so it's constantly evolving and growing, all of the versions that you use, whether it be on your iPhone, your iPad Pro or your MacBook, share the same file systems and features. So you can work on the same projects or shape your workflow around the devices you use or where you need to use them. I mean, let's be frank, the iPad version of Photoshop misses some core features that are on the desktop version, as does the Illustrator Draw app. Vectinator does not have that problem. You're not making any compromises when you move on the same project between your different workflows and files and devices. And on top of that, they're updating with great new features all the time and uniformly across all of their devices all at once. So go check out Vectinator. The link is in the description and a huge thank you to Vectinator for sponsoring this video and making this project possible. Speaking of this project, you guys are in for a treat. Enjoy. So my proof of concept worked. <laughs> And it got me more excited than ever to make something epic. So I immersed myself back into virtual reality. This VR sculpting program, Oculus Medium, is so much better to work with than a 2D sculpting program because it really does feel like working with clay in your hands rather than a two-dimensional screen. The bulk of the sculpting in this program is done what they refer to as a stamping system where using their presets, you can add or remove clay in that 3D shape, either in a flow as if you're painting with a three-dimensional brush or as an individual single stamp which allows for much more accurate placement and intricate detail. The most useful part of this system is the fact that you can make your own custom stamps and as you can see through the course of this sculpt I made several stamps I used in many different ways with various tweaks that I built specifically for my 40k soldier. Also sometimes as you could see with the backpack and as I did with the, the chest piece I would create the piece separate to the sculpture just in the orientation that the program was in just so I could add all the details, use the mirror tool, add layers, focus on the intricacies and then eventually when I was finished I duplicated all of those layers, combined them into a single shape and turned that into a stamp that I then simply stamped into my model. Layer after layer, stamp after stamp, stretching, smoothing, hour after hour, day after day, my sculpture took shape. And even though the process was time consuming and tedious, the more the sculpture took shape, the more exhilarated I became. Long last, my sculpture was wrapping up and it was time to add my final details and polish. I made a custom bullet hole stamp by sculpting the bullet hole onto a blank chunk of clay and then I inversed it with an intersecting chunk of clay on another layer. Basically, it served to flip it inside out by turning that into a stamp and removing areas of my original sculpture with that shape. It allowed me to create detailed bullet holes and battle damage throughout the armor. And I also used some other sharp stamps in the same way to create scratches, tears, and other intense damage to kick the detail and epicness of the sculpture up a few notches very quickly. And with my sculpture finally finished, I exported the model to be ready to 3D print and went through a process in the 3D printing program called slicing. Like I alluded to with my test print earlier, by breaking up the model into smaller parts, not only could I make the final model bigger than I would if I kept it all as one model, but I could strategically slice it in a way that would print with as few supports as possible and keep as much of the important details like the face and the chest plate as clean and as clear as they could be. With all of that slicing done, then it was simply time to print. As simple as that is, it's actually the most time consuming part. This 
took a long time to print. I could guess and tell you roughly how long, but I'd rather tell you exactly how long. I actually wrote on the base of each one how many hours it took to print. 60 for the base. 27.5 legs, torso. 27. Backpack, 14. And the weapons, 13. A total of 141.5 hours. That's a, uh, that's a lot of hours. So you'll notice that some of these have different support structures to others. So this is using what's called a tree-like support structure. I just sort of picked based on the models and I'm hoping it did a decent job. So all the parts are now roughly cleaned up. It's not uh, it's not super clean yet, but that comes later. Now we've got to assemble it. It's gonna be a little finicky. I've started to glue a couple of things together, some of the trickier bits, and as you can see, it's pretty satisfying when it comes together. We've got the sword here. But sometimes it takes a while to decide to stick. So I'm gonna just do all the sticking in separate parts because there are like subgroups and then the, they group together in larger groups. So one of the subgroups is the backpack here. I don't know if blowing super glue makes it dry faster. It does in my head. So that's one subgroup with this over here. And we got our gentleman here. Slowly as each part joins up, it becomes more and more satisfying to sort of see the model emerge. Ooh. Satisfying. Note to self, don't drop this because then the sword will snap. Does that sit upright? Ooh, just. I'm hoping that the legs are going to hold this thing on. Oh boy. Ooh, bit of bit of cleaning up I missed back here. Yeah. Oh no! No! Back on there! Stay. Let's see if we can put this whole model together. Starting with the legs. <laughs> oh cool. Look at that. Alright, I think that's done. Fingers crossed. And if it is, then this should in theory be the easiest bit to stick because it's just flat and horizontal. All right. Oh boy. Now I'm gonna give it a little bit of time for the glue to fully set. However, this is promising. Look at that. Now let's just take a moment to go back one step to my uh, sketch. Quite a difference in detail and obviously size. But overall the, the, the sketch is what the final outcome has become. So it was really worth doing that. But I'm most excited to sit this big boy next to this little boy. Oh my God! I'm pretty proud of that. We can't leap into painting just yet. I'm gonna have to spend an hour or two prepping this thing, which means using my various Dremel tools and sanding bits and refining bits to take away a bit of that layered look. And then I've got to do the base coat. But after that, I can finally paint it. Now I'm just gonna do all of that in one big session because I, I have spent too long on this to not finish it. And I'm starting now and I'm not resting until this is done. It's probably, I'm probably gonna regret that. Yeah. So using a Dremel tool, I tried to smooth out the most obvious areas of layering and I clean up the joints using green stuff. I even used it to add a little bit of extra manual detail such as back in the hair and parts of the face. I coated my 3D print in a putty primer which not only prepares the surface to be ready to paint but slightly fills in those layer lines. I covered both the big and small models in a base coat of black and then a dark brown. I used brown because the final models will be in a mostly red and gold color scheme and brown as a base color would add a bit of depth to these colors later on. So I'm just going to start off by painting this little guy because frankly at the end of the day the steps and the process are pretty much exactly the same on the big print just a lot bigger. So first the base colors. Red, gold, parchment color for the wings and skulls and steel. The base done, I gave the whole model a wash in a dark purple. This is watery ink sort of stuff settles into the cracks and details, immediately adding a lot of depth in the deepest areas. The color of the wash affects the tone of the model. Now I could have gone with like a brown or a dark red or a black, but at the end of the day, it would have ended up looking a little bit bland. So by using a purple, I end up with a slightly more interesting hue in the shadows in the paint job that will eventually be very warm in tone. After cleaning up the surface areas, the model with the base coat colors which have obviously been a little bit muddied up by that base coat wash layer by layer I add 
highlights. This is pretty much the rest of the process, but it takes the most time. Generally, I add a sort of mid-tone highlight over a slightly larger area and closer to the edges. And then for the sharper details or the very edges, I use a sharper or brighter highlight color, creating a real sense of contrast and crisp solidity throughout the rest of the model. Next, we move on to the big guy. And like I said, this process is largely the same, just way way more time consuming and with a lot more attention to depth and detail. had a lot of videos in a, in a row that I've like over invested effort into ecstatic with the result I actually haven't even properly looked at it to be honest I've been so like looking at the fine details of everything especially this little guy but soaking it all in together as a complete like little baby and daddy okay I'm incredibly proud of that now for context to a week of sculpting a week of 3d printing and then several days of painting staying up late amongst a lot of that. So there has been a lot that has gone into this video, but this is actually a project I have had in my head for so long. I've always wanted to make a big epic version of a Warhammer Space Marine. I've got it, like right here. It's like, it's the weirdest thing when something that you've always wanted to do and have around as something you made is here. Here it is. I'm gonna give myself a little pat on the back. That was that felt good. I love you guys. I say this often, but I love you so much that sharing is caring, as they say. So I'm going to share this with you guys. I actually have the 3D print ready model. I'm going to link to that on Thingiverse. And as part of that, I'll probably throw in uh, some of the sliced versions that I had. So if you have a 3D printer or if you want to play around with a 3D model, you're welcome to because I put a lot of effort into this. And if you can think of any way that you might enjoy it for yourself, you can go do a bit of that. And please let me know or show me what you do if you do something with it. Let's use a, some sort of hashtag so I can sort of see it in the future. Let's go hashtag Jazza40k. Yeah, that's cool. Maybe someone could like sculpt a Jazza avatar head in, in place of him and print and paint me as a space marine, huh? Heaven knows I'm not gonna do it <laughs> because f that. Now, if you had fun, which I sincerely hope you did, please like this video. If you do, other people are more likely to see it and uh, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think. And next time I'm, I'm ready to take on another big project, which let's face it, it's probably going to be tomorrow because I'm an idiot. Let me know in the comments what you think it should be. Otherwise, there are more videos over there you might enjoy. And uh, I'd, I'd appreciate it if you'd like to subscribe for this, this, uh, this fun with art thing that I do. Anyway, that's it for now. Until next time, I'll see you later. Boop, <laughs> boop,